Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. Author, motivational speaker, Tony, Tony Gaskins, Gaskins Jr. Thank What's up, my brother? How are you, man? Oh, good morning. Good. Thank What's y'all for having me. Good morning, good morning, sir. I'm gotta... glad we finally got you up here. Yes, yes. Florida boy. Mm. Tony, Uh-oh. Tony, <laughs> Tony be hitting me like, man, I'm, I don't think I'm big enough to come on the birth club. What are you like? What are you talking about, Tony? You talk to people all the time. You man. touch people in a, a special way. Whoa. What are you wanting for? <laughs> oh, he said touch, touch people, people in a special man, way. Shut up. <laughs> what you do though? People no. actually listen to your words and they they live. They by go on it. your right. Instagram page yeah. and watch all the advice that you're giving to everybody, right. and it helps so many people out. I know things like that are so important because you never know what someone's going through. They could look on your page and see something that perfectly relates to them. Right, right. Well, you know, it's kind of I see it like the celebrities and coming on the show, mm-hmm. and I'm an introvert, so I've just always been a writer. And so to get on social media and it go viral, Mm -hmm. it kind of thrust me into something that I did not plan for. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's been something getting used to it, you know, (laughs) trying to do the media. But it's positive though, because it's helping you. Because you have this book, make it work. Yes. Right. That's um. It's not. Is it out yet? Yes. Or do we have advanced copies? Okay. It's out January twenty second. It just came out. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that. It's twenty two time tested real life lessons for sustaining a healthy, happy relationship. And I was I was reading it, and I was like, damn, there's a lot of things in there that I agree with. Mm-hmm. That are lessons that sometimes we have to learn on our own. And you started off with just about what we've seen that's taught us about what love is supposed to be. Right, right. It was years ago, Charlemagne said to me, like, that my message was kind of, it's really like it uncommon sense, mm-hmm. just common sense. But when you get in love, you forget what you're doing and everything just goes out the window. And so I was waking up every day and seeing all of these iconic couples go through divorces and all of these break babies and the cheating scandals. And I was like, man, this is crazy. And for me, I've always been a student of love. Mm-hmm. I've just always been in awe of love and relationships. And so being a millennial and in a 12 year marriage, which is a hundred percent happy marriage, I said, I gotta speak on it, you know, just to share, just in case it's something in here that can change people's, you know, life. Mm-hmm. What, what, is, what is a student of love? Like what, what exactly are you learning? So I was just, I watched people mm-hmm. and studied people. And I saw my aunts, one aunt, permanently swollen eyes, permanently swollen lips, another aunt, three broken ribs, another cousin with black eyes. I would see my aunts when they would leave men and then go to a woman and the woman comes over and she's half burnt from hot grease. And it's not like you was a student of abuse. I was learning what not to do. Mm. And I was learning how so many of us associate pain with love. Yeah, some people grow up and see those things and they think that if a man is abusive to you, that means that he loves you. Oh, well, he did that, but he loves me so much and that's why he did that, because I did this wrong and we try to actually explain why somebody would be hurting us. Exactly, and so we've come to believe that a happy relationship is a fairy tale Mm -hmm. and that it's not real until it's been knocked down, drag out, break up the makeup 20 times, and so after seeing that so often and then creating something different because I made every mistake. When I was a college football player, I was in a toxic relationship and I was the one doing the dirt, but it was being reinforced. And so when I left that and met my wife, she just wouldn't accept anything that I was trying to do. And I realized in order to keep this woman, and then we had a son and he was in the intensive care unit. He was born two and a half months early. And I was 23 and I had just kind of transitioned from the street life because, you know, where I'm from, Arbondale, Florida, you have three options. You can be a drug dealer, you can be a pro athlete, or you can be overworked and underpaid. And so I tried to do it all, play football in college. And when I left the streets, I got married to my wife and two months into marriage, I tried to go back to the streets. Mm -hmm. And with a son intensive care unit, and her having no job and me being the only source of income, she walked away. And at that moment, I realized, like, wow, I got a woman who is not going to reinforce my grown boy behavior. Ooh. And that's when I started to change. Because some people try to tell women, well, a good wife stays no matter what. 
Like, I, right. And that means that you're a good wife. No matter what he does, you got to forgive him. You got to do this. Take him back. And you're wrong if you walk away from a relationship. But you needed her to walk away for you to realize that you had to change. I needed her to because I say you should not ride or die mm -hmm. for anybody but Jesus. You know, and and I say that because but Jesus died for us. Exactly. So I say that's the only person you should be riding and dying for. And what my wife showed me was I'm going to ride with you as long as you're going the right way. But if you take a stupid pill and you start to drive me into a ditch, <laughs> I'm jumping out and you on your own. Right. And so that's when I realized that I had to be in submission to something greater than me, to a purpose, a calling to be a real man. And then in order for her to trust my my lead, you know, in order her, for her to trust me as a husband. And that's when I started to grow and change. And I looked at society and I'm like, man, we're, we're living backwards. Mm -hmm. Everybody is into the threesomes, the foursomes, the strip club, the pornos, the multiple women, and it's breaking us down. And so guys hate me. I really don't have <laughs> friends. Well, what if, well, Tony, what if that works for them, though? Like, what if the threesomes... Work for them. Like, we see, what we that, see, what that, that's what we that see couple likes to do. You, you, we, we do see on the outside. True. But see, I'm a professional relationship coach. And so I'm the guy who is flown in, sign an NDA, and do the work. And I see the long term. So I tell everybody, you see your relationship. I see a thousand relationships. And I do this all day long. And I receive tens of thousands of messages. I still can I can open my inbox right now with over 10,000 unread messages from six different continents, from the ages of 16 to 68. So I really have become a love scientist, and I see the end result. And you never can invite lust, unbridled lust, from outside of your relationship into your home and expect it not to take over. Because lust is not like thirst. It can't be quenched. So once... You invite it in, and it is untamed. It takes over, and that's why you see all of these women who get into the threesomes, the guy gets the third woman pregnant, or he leaves her for the stripper that he met at the strip club that she took him to trying to please him. Once those lines are crossed, it's hard to uncross them. It's hard. And that's a lot of times I mean, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, but that's a hell of a generalization. It's no, well, not, not like you know what I'm saying. But like, I, see, I agree with him, though, 100%, wholeheartedly. How? None of y'all are doing it. But a lot of women do like, this because they feel like they have to sometimes. They, or, like, they'll tell you to keep your man. It can't just be you and him. You got to involve another woman. And that's the only way you can keep that's your man. all women and don't women, feel that way, though. All women... <laughs> We'll say this, and this has been on my podcast, Lip Service. Every woman will be like, well, all men cheat anyway. So I might as well bring the woman home so he don't have to go outside of the house. I don't do believe it. in that generalization either. That what? That, a lot I of women think, believe I don't, that. I don't think all women think all men cheat. Well, see, this is the thing. You got to understand we live by the majority rules. So, yes, there are 10 out of 1,000 women who are okay with threesomes and, you know, it's what they want to do. But general and we look at society it's just not healthy it breaks us down it breaks down the home and i'm a man so mm -hmm. i would love to live that dream but what i realize is that dream is pursuing pleasure and pleasure doesn't lead to happiness it leads to pain so eventually the dream that we are pursuing to have multiple women and threesomes and strip clubs and porno all in the relationship and then you're trying to raise kids too but then you wouldn't tell your daughter hey go be have a threesome with your husband. Right. You wouldn't tell your son you need two, three, four women, you know, and so it breaks us down. And then we look at the black on black crime and we look at all of the stuff going on and we say, what's going on? And it's a breakdown in the home. And so that's why I have focused my lane on rebuilding love and teaching real love. And, and I'm ostracized for it. I'm hated for it. I can't be in the in crowd. By who? Who hates you? You know, just in a sense of like, Amen. Every man I meet, <laughs> when we talk, he immediately starts to think that I'm looking down on him or I feel like I'm better than him. And then so many women send me messages of their husband and boyfriend. Oh, that Tony Gaskins is brainwashing you. He's this, he's that. And I reach out to certain people, artists and comedians, and because I'm a friendly person, I want to connect, you know. And I see people doing positive things, but energies, you know how en energies don't mix. And so I will see a guy that I'm reaching out to, and I'm like, I know this guy ain't that big. Mm -hmm. He could hit me back. I just want to salute him on what he's doing and then 
a month later, he's exposed for cheating on his wife and got a side woman pregnant and then leaves his wife for this other woman. And then the mistress comes out and then I'm like, oh, Who's he this? saw my energy. Just in general, this happened time and time again. So I'm like, oh, he he saw my energy. He's like the Grim Reaper. And he felt like, <laughs> you know, he felt like I was going to judge him and he stayed away. If you get that DM for Tony Gaskins, all right, your but time is up. I think it's changing, though. I think I think society and I think especially black love is changing. Because, I, you know, as a kid, like you said, you know, people, I, you, know, you know, you talk about what you see now. We just didn't see it back then because there was no social media. So you don't know what was going right. on. And people weren't getting caught the same. But it was happening. But I do see it changing because, you know, I just remember growing up, it was, that's what you've seen in your music videos. That's what you've seen in the movies that you watch. That's what society was. And that's what it pushed. But I, you see it changing now and people are starting to respect, uh, you know, black love. They're starting to respect wedding and marriages. So you're starting to see it going to a positive place now, though. That's what I'm pushing. And I appreciate you for what <laughs> you're doing. I mean... I know I read briefly about, you know, the struggles mm -hmm. of you and your wife. I didn't know what it meant, but I saw your, the 12 days of Christmas. I cheated. I cheated and, a, a couple of years, uh, seven, eight years ago. Yeah, don't say a couple. Uh, seven, eight years ago. <laughs> Almost a decade ago. And me and my wife went, went through a lot. You know, she she wanted to leave. and She actually left, and I had to do the work, and I continue to do the work. But, you know, with my relationship, the best thing about it is we're honest and we're open. And right. we and we kind of do the same thing. We talk to couples about what we've been through, the good, the bad, and, and how it hurts, how it affects us, how it still affects our relationship. Right. And we try to move on. And you know, you know, marriage is not easy. It's not. But it's something that we continue to work on and we continue to work on. And it's not, yeah, you see the the bright side and the glitz, but we show you the nasty stuff and the horrible things as well. And you know, you never know when you're going to watch TV and then you see something on TV and it'd be like, let me ask you a question. And that, those are the, the words, the famous words that you never want to hear. But, you know, you have to do the work. Right. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. I saw that. I saw the 12 days of Christmas and just every man that is promoting marriage and mm -hmm. praising their wife. Right. And putting her on that pedestal and, and admitting to doing wrong instead of trying to look like the knight in shining armor and then getting exposed later. Mm -hmm. And that's what was disrupting me. And I was telling guys, like, stop calling your woman your rib, but then treating her like your pinky toe mm -hmm. or like your heel. And so I, I feel like, and I and, and make it work. Wait a minute. <laughs> How do guys treat their pinky toes? You got my pinky toes. You got a cord on your toe. You know, my head. Like, like, you, got a cord you know. And I, and well, I well, got clearly the not treating them like well. Like your heel. <laughs> like, you know, treating her like, you, like stomping on her head, like walking on her, but mm -hmm. saying... But she calling her your shoe. rib, yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, don't set yourself up for failure. You know, don't come out here promoting love and pushing love and you know that you're not living right. right. And but then you ex you get exposed at the highest level and then everybody loses faith in love. And it's like, man, you could have just kept your relationship See, private. But I also feel like, you know, in this society, people don't like to let things go. Like you look at Kevin Hart and, you know, whatever he went through with his wife and he cheated. And, you know, we would assume that he moved on. It seems like he moved on. But if you look at any of his comments, it's still cheetah. You know what I mean? And, and <laughs> right. it does nothing but put that negative stereotype back in their relationship. Because if his wife reads that comment, it's back on that thing and it's back in their relationship. We don't let things go. We don't let people breathe. Same thing with Cardi being offset. Everybody has an opinion and, oh, this or that. We don't know what they worked out and what they're continuing to work out. And I think that hurts a lot of relationships as well. It does. Social media, I mean, and the world is it, tearing it down. And but I also say that social media really exposes, you know, a, a weak bond, which is great. And, and when we see them work through it, and that's what I really am pushing, working through it. You know, I, I love Kevin and his his wife, what they're doing, Carmelo and and Lala, you know, trying Lala, to work through it. Beyonce did it the best. Jay Z and He's Beyonce, good. you know. So I believe in second chances. Mm -hmm. My thing is, I think we need to stop being a society of nine, ten chances in, in relationship <laughs> right. because what it does is it, it breaks down the woman and then she passes it down to her children and then they grow up and they repeat the cycle and then we see this brokenness and and what happens is those individuals still can rise from the ashes and be the concrete that grew from, I mean the rose that grew from concrete and then they're given a platform and then they promote their brokenness. Right. And so that's what I feel like we have to get to the foundation because you'll have a guy at the top of the mountain and he's promoting, hey, smoke weed all day, uh, have threesomes, foursomes, have a woman that's okay with it. 
And then all of the young men and the young girls who 13, 14, they start to believe in it and they're doing this in high school. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, we got to be more responsible. Right. And it's not about we, hating. I think we got a tendency to focus on the negative as opposed to focusing on all the positive images that are out there. Because I don't see a million, there's no married men, there's not a lot of married guys out there saying, let's do threesomes. I can only think of like one celebrity couple that was out here promoting threesomes, and that was Tiana. Not, not even married, not even well, married, who, but mean, just like, people in, in, in you know, relationships in general, just like guys, like, uh, you Are know. Are they single, though? Uh, not, not even when single, When you meet a but, guy, one of the first things he'll ask is, do you like other women? Because they want to <laughs> know if you're down. Right. Just men in general promoting threesomes. I mean, I've seen a guy on here, I think he was an actor, and he was saying, like, I don't believe in marriage. Jason Mitchell. Yeah. But he's and 20 I, something years old. And, and he's like 29, 30. You see what I'm saying? That's a grown man. You know, I, I, and not everybody lives at the same standard, but I'm saying we have to, like they say, don't knock it until you try it. Mm-hmm. I did everything under the sun. You said you were with 100, over 100 over women. Over 100 women by the age of 21. I was one of the absolute worst. I mean, I was one of the absolute worst. And I felt like I was an undercover agent because when I changed my life, and then I said, you know what? I did that at the highest level. Let me do this at the highest level. But I understand why people will be mad at you now. So, and the reason I say that is, is, you know, you want people to be a certain way and you're pushing a certain way. But you done knocked off 100 chicks. So it's almost, it's almost yeah, like let saying, me Let me fuck 100, Tony, <laughs> and then I'll calm down. I'm this, not saying this that. This is the thing. But this is the thing, me. though. <laughs> a lot, that. My friends was at 300. That. My friends were at 300. God damn. I had one friend at... Them, I, I had one make friend you better because they no, no, had three and I had one friend at, at, at on six... I had one friend at 600. You know, I have clients I have clients who their record is 10 in a day, 8 in a day, 7 in a day. And so... That sounds like an addiction. For men... And for men in society, because of the way the woman has been mistreated and broken, she becomes disposable to men and it becomes very easy. And then me being an athlete, you know, here I am. I'm, I was the star player in my county, one of the largest counties in Florida. Mm-hmm. I'm number one, you know, and so women came easy. And so at 21 years old, I was exhausted. I had started looking for my wife at 16. But guess what? I did not know and I was ignorant and I was pursuing women, put a full court press on them and 99% of the women would have sex on the first day. And it started to affect me, but I was operating from my confusion and brokenness. And then I realized, wow, this is, they're doing this because their father or their brother was not there. And that's when I took and I flipped it and I turned my mess into my message. But do you feel like with, with that being said that people should get it out of their system? Because it's kind of like what you did. And, and I think kind of with me and Charlemagne as well, you know, we. Charlemagne has never I been close to 100 women. women. No, I, I, I don't said, believe no, that. No, no, I but, promise no, no, no. you. 100 but, women is crazy. We got to 100 women, but we changed when we got to it, when we got to that point in our life, when we realized what we really wanted. You know, Right, what I mean? right. And, it, you know. I didn't knock off no hundred chicks, like not, not even nowhere near. But you did. But when you got to that point, you changed. Right. You know what I mean, so there's some dudes out there that might I be feel like thirty y'all. years old. It has to change, or twenty five years old that has to change. You're right. I, I I don't expect any man to be as transparent as me. And so I'm gonna believe y'all when y'all say these numbers. But I'm, I'm nowhere near a hundred. I just, I just, <laughs> man, I, maybe, you, you know I what? don't think I've hit 50. You got to see his throwback picture. Maybe it was a see. Florida thing. Okay. <laughs> no, maybe I was like, like, I don't know. Like, how do you sleep with 100, 100 women? Is gr- wow. I, I mean, lost like, my virginity at 15. I didn't lose mine until like well, 30. 17. <laughs> 16, 17. Something like and, that. and it was, and we live in a sex culture. Mm-hmm. And everything is promoting it. And so when you're mm-hmm. at the bottom and you have no knowledge, you're just doing what you're seeing. And so for me, you kept I, the count, though? Yeah, because that's, again, men were taught that you are only a man based on how many women you get. And the OGs would say, look, you don't want what's just between her legs. You want what's between her ears. You need her mind. And when you can control her. And so it was a competition. And guys would go out, how many numbers can you get tonight? First one to five wins. And so it's just we this cycle of points. brokenness. We used to play points. Exactly, and so but I ain't, you never won. Yeah, I had like three, four. Yeah, I mean that was right. Like 
<laughs> the most might have been eight for somebody. You know what I'm saying? Well, you was horrible looking, so it was a little different. And you wasn't an athlete. <laughs> this nigga cute? You no, I'm cute? not he cute. He was an athlete. So what? He was an athlete. And I thought it was, was me tiny. at first. And then it was a guy who was really looks challenged. And he said to me, Tony. He really looks challenged. <laughs> that is such a I, nice I, way to say it. He was looks challenged. And he said to me, he said, Tony, it's nothing you can do with a woman that I can't do. We both men. And I was like, wow, you That's know real. what? You're right. So it's a lot of looks challenge guys <laughs> who are doing a, a lot. And I feel like we have to, as men, get it out our system. But at the same time, you have to realize it's never out your system. I agree. I it agree. takes sacrifice. I agree. I also think, you know, people have to be careful because there's so many STDs out there and you, you and you definitely don't want to do a thing. But not only that, like, you know, I was talking to my daughter when I, I cheated on my wife and I got caught. The first thing my daughter said to me, because my, my family's close, my daughter's close to me, was not why'd you do it, Dad, or or you know, you know, what got you to that point was who told on you? Mm. You see what I'm saying? And that almost made me feel like this what she watches makes it kind of acceptable because she wasn't devastated. She mm. wasn't distraught. It was who told on you, Dad? Like, Dad's my guy. Like, who told on you? Mm. And that hurt, and that, and that's what made me think, damn, I gotta make sure I have to reprogram what she's listening to and what she's watching. Because you don't want your kids to grow up thinking that it's okay to mm -hmm. uh, for a cheater, you know. And maybe if her, if she gets married and her husband cheats on it, and it's okay. And that's what I had to deprogram. And I'm like, that's what I want to teach people out there. But don't you know the vows I mean? kind of teach you that too, though? The marriage vows, because the marriage vows say, you know, till death do us part, for better or for worse. So don't you, don't people feel like they're honoring the vows by not leaving? By not leaving? Mm -hmm. Yes, that don't is. The vows also say you're supposed to be monogamous. Or? No. And also, and, and, and also, <laughs> you know, don't between, say that. Though, a union between this man and this woman? Yeah, but they don't say you gotta be. You don't. You gotta be monogamous. They a lot of uh, for me, I see a vow. <laughs> don't. I don't. don't see that on this vow. <laughs> it's not. Is that my line? I don't even remember the vows. To be oh. honest with you, for me, I see it as a commitment under God, and I feel like a lot of people that I experience don't divorce because of what the Bible says. And so they feel like mm -hmm. because the church has told them you can't divorce, you can't divorce. So they stay through anything. And for I, better or worse. you know, for mm -hmm. better or worse. And I tell people just because it says until death does us part does not mean until he or she kills you. Correct. Right. So you have to know that even if you believe in God, that if he can forgive you for lying, he can forgive you for divorce if you left for your safety and your sanity. Is committing adultery a sin? Yes, it is. So adultery is so a is sin. So premarital sex, Mr. And premarital guys. is a sin. <laughs> <laughs> premarital Not sex is guys. a sin. <laughs> but see, this is the thing for me is we have to understand that none of us are perfect, and I understand That's that. And right. That's why I don't judge anybody. Right. But my thing is we have to come to an age where we stop making excuses for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we say, mm -hmm. you know what, it's time to change. And I want to make a commitment, not just for me, but for the world, for society, for my children. Absolutely. And do something different. Yeah, and I, I think we got to stop generalizing, too, because it's just as crazy as it sounds when, you know, you feel like you, you got to teach your child better. We got to, we got, we can't say all women do this or all men do that. Like, that's not, that's not it's, healthy. You're right, it's not, it's not. And, it, and when you say all, and I don't really say all, but when we have to address the majority. And, and not really focus on the exception to the rule because somebody has driven 90 miles an hour and hit a tree and lived. So we can't say everybody who drives 90 miles an hour hits a tree will die because somebody has lived. But if you base your life off of the exception to the rule, you're going to end up hurt more often than you will happy it and healthy. We, we, we would rather you not drive into a tree. But it could be a silent majority, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's, some, it's, it's not a silent majority. Especially, yeah, especially with social yeah. media. A lot honest, of things right? are magnified. It is. Mm -mm. A lot of things are magnified. But it's not only social media. It's also like you got to be honest with the people around you. You know what I mean? It's, a lot of times it is the majority. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to say that and I don't wish that, but it is a majority of people. that. I've seen a things. hell of a change over the past few years. Uh, but now All the brothers I know are like with their wives. They with one woman. Right, like They now. going to sleep at Absolutely. night. Like I see that a lot. But do you remember 10 years ago? Did you see that the same? Yeah, but we was young then. <laughs> we were kids. I think, but I think the point is that women shouldn't have to go through so much pain so and much heartache pain. to get to that point. To get to the promise, right. it shouldn't right. take for you to have messed up twenty times to you're be right. like, "I'm gonna finally do this right." Right you, you to where like that time, think about how mentally broken down a woman is, having dealt with that over and over and over and over. Again. How much anxiety she'll have, you know what I mean? It's the truth. Exactly, and the men we focus on the pound of cure instead of the ounce of prevention. 
but the ounce of prevention weighs more. So guys only come to me for coaching when their woman has walked away. Right. And I'm like, she's been beaten and broken for 10 years, and now you love her to death and you want her back. But she's in a vegetative state right. in emotionally. And so that's why I say we, we just have to take accountability. And for me being a man, I, I put it on men first just because I feel like society has created a system where we can dominate and control. And I, I do a Q&A on Instagram every day. And if you read the questions, you will see the lost mental state of the women. And it all comes from, and I say, if you give a woman a good father or a good brother or a good boyfriend or a good husband, her life changes. Right. And until we as men accept responsibility for being dogs and perpetuating in a toxic cycle of abuse and mentally, emotionally, or verbally, our society will remain broken. I see it both ways, though. I think a good woman can can change a man. Like you and know, when you can. when you got a woman that you know is a great woman, and you want to be the man that she needs, that's you making a change because of her. It's not necessarily the man making the woman great. Men have power. Women have influence, influence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so. Even though my wife was a part of my change, she still was a reflection of me. So when I wasn't talking to her right, she kind of shut down and she changed. But when I took the initiative and I learned how to communicate and I started leading in love instead of waiting for her to love me and then me reciprocating. When I started leading in love and I washed her with love, her whole glow changed. And so it's still a lot that we have to do as men because when you look at it the way when you're in my shoes and you see it uh, so many women are waiting on the approval of a man now tony you talk about this in the book traditional roles right because that's kind of what we're touching on right now so let's talk about these traditional roles and how important uh it is that sometimes these roles do have to change yes so i talk about not having gender roles so that there's things in a relationship that a woman needs to lead in because that's her strength there are times that men need to be washing dishes and cooking. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my wife has to take the trash out, you know, where we see that as the man's thing. And so in a relationship, it is not a woman submitting to a man. It is the two of you submitting to one another. And then you are teammates instead of opponents because most of us in our relationships are opponents. And we're trying to defeat one another through deception and manipulation. But when you come together and you love selflessly, there are no gender roles. A woman can pick up the slack where a man slacks and a man can pick up the slack where a woman slacks. And now you truly are teammates. And that's how you win together. And to be honest with you, I tell men because most men want money. And my whole life changed when I started leading in love and being selfless. And I went from working for somebody else making $8.50 an hour to being able to own 11 companies with over 50 streams of income all because I had a singular focus on healthy love. And from that love and self-love, everything else in my life flourished without me even having to really focus on it. Mm -hmm. You think that a relationship can be successful if you're in love, but there's no physical like lust or attraction to each other? Yes, I think it can, but you it has to be built on communication. And so what you realize and what I've come to learn is that sex in a relationship is a plus, not a priority. And when we understand that the largest sexual organ is the mind, and you focus on making love to the mind instead of making love to the body, that is when sex r loses its power and real love flourishes. So my wife and I, we may go three weeks without intercourse, and I don't miss a beat. But as men, we've thought that we have to have a release every day. But I fall deeper in love in that three weeks of just communicating. And there's no physical attraction. There's a physical attraction, but there's no physical interaction in the sense of intercourse. And I'm being very transparent here. And that's where I learned that sex is a plus and not a priority. What about couples that go for months without having sex? If you're communicating and you're actually making love to one another's mind, then it's healthy and it's real. But if you're going for months without sex and there is no communication, mm -hmm. if there's no mental stimulation, then that's when something is broken and it needs to be addressed. And a lot of times it's because somebody is focused on someone else outside of the relationship. And then that's how it shows up 
in the relationship. When you got with your wife, did you cut off all your other women? When I met my wife, I was talking to four other females. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the first week, I had cut all of them off. Because from the first real conversation, she sat me outside on the bench in front of her apartment, and we talked for six hours. And in that six hours, I knew that she was my wife, and I was 21 years old. And so that's what I say. Every man is ready, but you have to be willing to surrender to that feeling. How did you change your lifestyle so fast? I you, didn't. You didn't have a relationship, Coach. I, I, I didn't. I didn't change it so fast. So you I, cheated early on, and you had other girl, women I, early on. No. Well, I met her at 21. Mm -hmm. Two months into the relationship, she left me because I was trying to bring in my controlling, toxic behavior. And she said, we need a break. But really that meant we'll never talk again. We just so happened to come back six months later. When I got her back that six months, I said, I'm not letting you go. I got to trap you, you are an amazing woman. And so I got her pregnant on purpose. And she was in school you to be a doctor. Oh my gosh. Oh, you know, I was, I was Tony. This, this is why I teach though, because you can't have a message <laughs> unless you have a mess. Yeah. And so unless you've been the absolute worst, then you can't explain how to be the best because you haven't done it all. And so for me, going from both ends of the spectrum, I've seen the whole scope of things. And that's why I teach what I teach because I know this is what really works. And so I kept her and I got married at 23 and it took me from 23 to 25 to get 100% right. And so well, I had one- you get right though? Cause you didn't have a relationship coach or nothing, did you? I talked to my father and, okay. and I learned from his mistakes. He got a divorce after 25 years. And then this is what I did. I threw out all the music. At that time I was being raised by Plies and Jeezy. I'm from the South, I'm from Florida. <laughs> so Plies had mixtapes and he was, you know, goon affiliated and Jeezy. Those were the only two people who was raising me. I threw their albums out the window. <laughs> Sweet Pussy Saturday. <laughs> you see? Pussy Baby. I threw it out the window. Baby. That's who raised you. I replaced it with knowledge. And so for 10 hours a day, I had my earbuds in and I listened to Zig Ziglar, Les Brown, Jim Rohn, Jack Canfield, Tony Robbins for 10 hours a day. I was working eight hours in a group home All them and I was goals. listening I was listening to what they were teaching. All of them got holes. They Tom. all got holes. And that's what one of my boys told me. He said, he said, I got holes in my socks. I said, what that mean? He said, you can't see my problems. No, I said, holes. Oh, you H O E S. Yes. I, was like, I, I, I wasn't listening to that. Yeah, I was confused. I was just holes. learning. I was learning. And, and you know what I did? I put it all together and I rewrote my DNA as a man. And so at 25 years old, at about the end of 25, I said, I will be. 100% faithful in mind, body, and spirit for the rest of my life. Dope. And I'm 34 now. And so my wife and I haven't had an argument in a decade. We have disagreements, but because of the communication the, rules. What, 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 how do you define an argument and disagreement now? An argument is yelling, shutting down, walking off, slamming the door, going to bed mad. Okay. A disagreement is when you disagree on something, but you sit down like adults mm -hmm. and you use the communication rules. I have a chapter in Make It Work called that says arguing is not communication. Right. And by using those rules that I pieced together from Stephen R. Covey, uh, Zig Ziglar and Jim Rohn, I pieced stuff that had nothing to do with relationships. I pieced it together and created about 15 communication rules and that eliminated arguments. And mm -hmm. what it did is it cultivated love. Mm -hmm. I always say that you have to learn how to disagree effectively when you're in a relationship because you don't agree on everything. But how do you handle it when you have a disagreement? That's really important. You have to listen to both sides. So you have to seek to understand, mm -hmm. then right. be understood. A lot of people argue to be right. Exactly. I used to do that. Argue just to be right. So you, you just want to win a situation. So whatever it takes to win that situation, that's what you're going to do. But or you, don't you just say you're right without even really caring or thinking that the other. All right, you we, win. We should always ask yourself, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Right, right. You Exactly. And when you are operating from a place of selflessness, then you can truly hear who is right in this situation right. when you're being selfless instead of being selfish. And so a lot of times I just, you know, I realize I'm wrong. And then my wife, she realized she's wrong. And I'm going to tell you our one, our only argument, and this is how – easy love can be our argument now is her yelling too loud and too much at my son's soccer game 
That's our only disagreement. You're wrong. <laughs> Why are you such a joy killer? That's, oh, a, that's our only disagreement. Let her, let her cheer tell you what I, right right you're wrong. Too. I, I, I tell her, I, well, see, this is what happened. This is what you're happened. Wrong. She yells so much. She yells so much, and sometimes it gets a little out there. It's and a so, soccer game. Tony, you're from proud Florida. Of you but, 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 that's our only, but see, I'm an introvert, and she's getting me in fights. So a guy stand, hey, I'm gonna knock you the f out. Oh, we I'm just like, talked about, about that. that. So I we had to bring a gun that. to the soccer game. Oh my god! Because gosh. I'm like, if he pulls his gun, I need to have mine. You in Florida? You goddamn yeah, exactly. right. Exactly. And I know a guy who went from got killed. So I'm like, baby, chill. You know what I'm saying? If he doesn't know what he's doing, we could talk to him after the game. But you keep yelling at these grown men. I'm about to have to fight. Yeah, yeah. And, and, just and, had and this I'm gonna end up in prison. Yeah, yeah. just had this convo. Yeah, and I say that's how the devil gonna use you. Get me killed. Right. Get me killed. And I know a guy who got killed at the football game arguing about the play with another father, and the guy pulled out a gun and shot him and killed him. Now that's our only. Y'all are in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> that's not like that happens all over the place. Right. Okay. That's, I, that's, we we, okay. we in Florida. Never know. You know, I wanted to say I was joking when I said all of those people had holes, but. What if all of those people you were getting these messages from, you found out that they cheated or, you know, they got a baby from somebody else? Does that dilute their message in any way? Uh, my father always told me, chew the meat, spit out the bones. So I learned from the mistakes of others. And I'm sitting and I'm watching and I'm studying because I'm seeing pastors right now who are coming out saying, hey, I've been cheating on my wife while I'm touring the country speaking. And so I look at their flaws, and then that helps me grow as a man. Mm -hmm. It does not change what they taught me, so to speak, but it does show me that you you wrote the other day, uh, the the message is the messenger, or the messenger yes. is the message. The messenger is the message. And so yeah. I believe that. And so I focus on not mixing the sacred and the profane. And I tell people, if you can find somebody sleeping with me, I'll give you $10 million. And I don't have $10 million to give. So I live what I teach. I, I wish they'll give me a, a camera 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. And so I pride myself on being who I am in the dark when nobody's looking, living that lifestyle. So when other men fall, I take a lesson from it. And I see how eventually what's done in the dark comes to the light and you'll be exposed. And so for me, I believe God gave me the wisdom at 25 years old is when I went on Oprah and I went on Tyra Banks and I exposed myself of being a toxic, controlling lover. And I told the story so that nobody else could tell it in mm -hmm. their own way. And I exposed myself because I didn't want to be that guy who came with a message of healing and then your demons and your devils come out 30 years later and say, right. you did this. Right. Mm -hmm. but, you, but you know what the fear is, though? The fear is you come out and you explain that toxic relationship. And, you know, even with me, I, I explain my toxic relationship with my wife. And my fear is my wife stayed through that toxic, that toxic relationship. And, you know, she I would say she changed me. She turned me into the man that I needed to be. But in certain cases, I don't necessarily think women should stay. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean, my wife did stay when I was toxic and I was controlling and I was insecure and I was all those things. But that scares me because you don't want to tell women that they should stay because she stayed and it worked. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. the only fear when you tell people those stories. But that's not our, but that's not our place to tell anybody. Right. Right? It, it's not. It's really and their own decision. It's their decision. It's if you not. mess up, you don't know how somebody's going to react right. or what it will do to them. And everybody has a different threshold. To I, don't, I don't tell anybody to stay. Right. I don't tell right. anybody to stay. I say I believe in second chances, mm. meaning that if somebody cheats on you and you want to forgive them, and stay with them. And their then, actions are showing that and their they actions, have, they're right. consistently doing, the work. Yep. doing what and they And I have a do. chapter called Believe What They Consistently Show You. Yep. Mm -hmm. So your wife stayed. But if you did the same thing the next year and got caught or just did it, period, and then she, probably, she stayed again, probably cut my then that's terrible. Shot, you can't you change a mean? person unless they want to change themselves. And you have to look Absolutely. at what they're doing, their actions. And be like, okay, what do they say? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And I think age matters. I think experience right. matters. Like, I've been with my woman for, it'll be 21 years this year. So that's a mm. long time. Mm. I've been, we've both been several different people in those those, those phases of life. That's teenagers and right. college for her and 20s and 30s. Is she, is she from Monk's Corner? Yes, sir. Yeah. Born and raised. And so y'all kind of work through your brokenness. And you work through the misinformation right and you grew together yeah. and that's when they say grow together that's what you got to do and so if you're growing together that's different than 
one person growing, growing and the other person mm -hmm. stunting their growth. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. y'all grew together. And so, see, both of you married men, mm -hmm. and look where y'all at. Right. You're peaceful. You're happy. People want money. Men want money, but the real prosperity is peace. And you have peace when you take care of your real. I got way more money when my relationship and my marriage. Me too. I, teach I, that. Like, that when teach I that. Cheating, <laughs> I stopped cheating. I haven't cheated it since, like, October of 2016. And it's like, yeah, the past couple of years, I've made more money than ever. Like, and it's not about mon money, but my life Success, flourished. just yeah, like, so yeah, I, yeah when, life, it, life when, feels when better. When I fix that, that foundation, it's a universal it, it, law. It, it just keeps coming, pause. Well, here's two men that don't hate you, Tony. It's a universal <laughs> law that says if you honor your wife, the universe will honor you. Yeah. Right? You know, God said it in the good book. He said he who finds a wife finds a good thing and receives favor from the Lord. And so it's a universal law whether you believe or you don't, that when you do good, it's coming back 10 times stronger. Right. And if we could promote that message, that every man who is a millionaire, but he's dogging out women, he would be worth 10 times more if he had one woman and he focused solely on that woman. Right. Everything else could flourish because he wouldn't be dividing his energy. Exactly. Right. Now, what if he's fucking a bunch of women, but he's not dogging them out? Like, what if he treats all his women good? He buys them all gifts. He gives them time when he got time. He's not, he's not married. He right, right. He you know what I'm saying? There's no you, way possibly you can't. he can devote on one woman. But he's not dogging her, though. Like, you know that. You know what I mean when I say dogging her. Right, right. He's you not, grew up on he's not, Right, right. He's not, <laughs> you, know what I'm you know, beating her. But the thing is, is he's still perpetuating the cycle because every one of those women want him to be their exclusive man mm -hmm. and so he's breaking her down and so if she has kids her kids are broken it's the kid right. the cat syndrome where the boss yells at at me i go home yell at my wife my wife yells at my son my son goes and kicks the cat and the cat did nothing what wrong did the cat do and exactly nothing. it's the kick the cat <laughs> syndrome so that's what happens when yeah. this guy is manipulating these women sleeping with these women and they accept that role because then they go on instagram and they promote the side chick or the right. one of many and women get comfortable having half of a man instead mm -hmm. of a whole man wow. and and that is perpetuated and we don't realize it when we say why is there so much black on black crime why is there so much aids and stds we don't go back to the foundation that if you give a person love and they can see healthy love between this relationship in their home they become a total different person. Wow. Now, you, you have a book called uh, Single is Not a Curse. Single is not a curse, yeah. Can, can you explain what made you want to write that? Because I got a lot of single homegirls. Right, right. I wrote it because I feel like that is the space where self-love really should happen. Mm -hmm. And that you are not ready for a relationship until you are 100% happy being single. Mm. And it doesn't mean you need a relationship at that point, but it means that's when you're ready. Because if you are not happy being single, then that means you are desperate in love and desperate for love. So you will compromise your standards and you'll accept whatever you can get. So you have to be able to find peace in singleness in order to truly have peace in love. Now, what about the woman that's happy being single? She's at peace being single, but on her vision board, she has, I do want to be married one day and find a man. That's the the space she needs to operate from. Okay. Right. Because now she's Not operating any man, from self-love. Right, right. Is what's really important. She's cre she's gonna create an abundance of men approaching her. And so, and I talk about the three B's, focusing on your brain, your brand, and your body. If you focus on your brain, your brand, and your body, those three B's will elevate you to a level of self-love. And, and I have the four levels of love, where you have lust, like, love, and self-love. And I believe the highest level of love is self-love. And when you get to self-love, everything flows from there. And so if every single person could get the ounce of prevention, read, make it work, fall in love with you, set standards for your life, now anybody who you attract you can look at your standards, not just your preferences. Because a lot of women single and a lot of men single because they're looking at preferences. A man says she got to have a big butt. She got to have a flat stomach. She got to be this complexion. A woman says she has to be six foot. He has to make uh, six figures. He has to have a six pack or six inches. And so now 
She's stuck. Six inches. Six inches. Yeah. You, you, you know, the, the, I, and I tell women all the time. That was a random number. That's six, that, six though. That, that's what the ladies tell me. What they would say you ask for at a least. Shot they say at least six. <laughs> what do you want? This guy here uh, <laughs> said he eight inches and something Seven in, inches, in, in, three, in the black four. privilege. Eight when it's warm. I say, man, that's too much information. But that's what a lot of women waiting on that six six <laughs> six. Just six. And what do we know of six six it's six? The devil. You gonna have a devil on your yeah, hands. Yeah, that little devilish six inch penis. Get that away from me. <laughs> I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about six figures, okay. six foot tall, and a six pack. We're gonna use that yeah, we definitely need that clip. You know, but then some, but some women they go Goodness further gracious. and they waiting on a certain package. And so, <laughs> when when you start looking at your standards instead of your preferences, that's when you really find real love. That's so true. Women will be like, oh, he's got to make more money than me. He's got to have this. He's got to own these things, and it'd be stuff they don't even have. Exactly. But they want somebody else to have things that they don't even have. I have clients who were in a celebrity space moving up, and but they would be making like twenty thousand, forty thousand, and they would say, "I want a man who makes two million." I'm like, he doesn't want you, <laughs> unless he wants to control you and dog you out. But you know, I what, know what does he? What does he? I mean, it, there are exceptions to the rule. But what I'm saying is, if you're making two million, and what makes this woman feel like? She deserves you if she's comfortable at twenty thousand, and she feels like it's her right to have a man who makes X amount of money. You might not judge her as a man. I don't. I don't judge a woman as a man on how much mm -hmm. she makes. But what I'm saying is, when you are demanding, you need to make sure that you are a reflection of what you're trying to attract. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be exact, but what it has to be realistic. But I can push back on that a little bit because we said, you know, early in the conversation, we say that sometimes you have things that your partner doesn't and your partner has things that you don't. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that like money bank accounts have to match in order for it two people to match. You're right. You're right. It doesn't. What, what my point is is that your standards and your preferences, your preferences can't be unrealistic in the sense to say, I want this six foot six figures and six a six inches. pack <laughs> and and but you are and you have to accept me because it goes both ways right. mm -hmm. so if you say i make this and i want a man who makes a hundred thousand but you make thirty thousand that man may say i want a woman who makes fifty thousand so is he wrong for now putting his preferences on the table mm -hmm. we just think about what looks good on paper right instead of actually meeting a person and being like okay this could work and you yeah, have money to be shouldn't calm. matter i get what you're saying but money i don't think money should matter. My, my wife doesn't work so i don't believe money should matter mm -hmm. what i'm what i mean is your your preferences should be real realistic mm -hmm. you can't be in a, a nickel wanting a dime if you want a dime you got to be working to become a dime now, if you if when you first met her, she didn't work. You think that would have been an issue, or that still would have been the one? She didn't. She didn't work. We we met in college, and so. But if it was like later, and you met someone, and you had you were making what you have now, eleven businesses, and you met a woman who didn't work, would that matter? This is what I always tell people, and I and y'all really got to put this in here so people don't get hung up on the money. Let a person's character be their currency. And when a person's character is their currency, you'll find that a lot of broke people are rich and a lot of rich people are flat broke. So I evaluate character. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have two nickels to rub together. I didn't have anything in my name but a driver's license. But she saw my character and who I wanted to become and what I was working towards. And so really she was in a better position than me because she was in school to be a doctor and I was in school with four different majors, didn't know what I wanted to do. But she knew she heard my purpose and she heard my calling. And so really, she kind of chose me. She took a chance on me. Mm -hmm. And me personally, now she doesn't work. When I first got with her, being a grown boy, I was like, man, she's going to be a doctor. That means I could be a stay-at-home father. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> but then the tables turned. Wow. <laughs> and now I'm taking care of her financially, but she takes care of me spiritually, emotionally. You know, she's there for me. And that is immeasurable that is priceless so basically you're telling women if your man is a soundcloud rapper stick with him if he got good character <laughs> if he has character no amount of money can buy character mm -hmm. but character can make you any amount of money mm -hmm. so if he has character meaning that he operates from self-love and he leads in love and he loves you mm -hmm. and he treats you right and he is making progress see and this is the thing 
a lot of women are with a man chasing a fantasy. And it's a difference between chasing a fantasy and chasing a dream. A dream is rooted in purpose. A fantasy is rooted in pleasure. So like you say, a SoundCloud rapper, if he's doing it because he wants chains and cars, he's chasing a fantasy. If he's doing it because he wants a platform to start a foundation that will impact the inner city youth, then he's chasing a dream. And so as a woman, naturally women are supporting their men and, and lifting them up. But you have to make sure that the man that you are so-called in submission to actually has a mission. Mm. And if the man has no sub, a mission, then you shouldn't be in submission to him. I want I want before we get out of here, I want, I want to play this clip for you. Cause I want your thoughts on this. Did you see the video with uh, Nikki Giovanni talking to James Baldwin? Uh, briefly. Let, uh, let's, let's play, play a little bit of it. Of course you can lie to me, and you will. If you love me and you're going off to Maddie someplace, you're lying to me. Cause what the hell do I care about the truth? I care if you're there. And why are you gonna be truthful with me when you lie to everybody else? You lied when you smiled at that cracker down the job, right? Lie to me, smile. Treat me the same way you would treat him. Because I've caught frowns and the anger. You come home and I catch hell because I love you. I get least of you. I get, I get the very minimum. And I'm saying, you know, face it with me. Is that too much of a black woman to ask of a black man? Talk to me, Tony. That's one of the deepest things that I have ever heard. And it's so real. And But I feel like what she's really saying is learn how to control your emotions and give me the love and respect. Don't feel like because I'm your woman, I am your footstool. I am your heel. I'm your punching and that bag. You you got, I'm more. your punching yeah. bag. People and always so, say you hurt the people closest to you. Exactly. And what happens with men is a lot of times we're not looking for a wife. We're looking for a human teddy bear. And when you think about a little boy with a teddy bear, when he's angry, he rips it apart and throws it up against the wall. And then he realizes the only thing that he has in the still of the night is that teddy bear that he just ripped apart. So he goes and he picks it up and he stitches it back together and he falls back in love with it. And then when he's mad again, he tears it apart. And so that is what this grown boy is doing. He was a boy and became an adult, but he didn't become a man. So he's a grown boy. And now he's treating his woman like his human teddy bear. So he tears her apart and then he stitches her back together. But then he doesn't realize that this is a human and not a baby doll. So now you're dragging this woman through the dirt and you're tearing her apart. And what does she have left? And I feel like that is what Nikki Giovanni was saying is don't come and give me your worst when you give everybody outside of this your best. When you get them crackers, your best. <laughs> right. Come and give me your best. And I feel like we all have done that because we assume that this person knows me the best, they can deal with me the best, and they can handle this toxic side of me. Yeah. When actually that person needs the best of you. And it takes emotional intelligence. It takes a conscious decision, right. and it takes you being selfless. But I think that right there, that's one of the, I think that's the deepest thing on love I've ever heard, and especially from a, a female perspective. And I had never heard that, and I, I didn't. I really don't even know who Nikki Giovanni is because I she's before poet, my time. Poet, mm -hmm. uh, activist. Yeah, she's still alive too. Man, that's so yeah. deep. And I feel like if we can understand that on both sides, and especially for a man. Give your woman your best. And I tell every man this, every man on the sound of my voice, give faithfulness a try. Be 100% faithful. Try it for 30 days. You're going to make it. Then go 60. Then go half a year. Then go a year. If you are 100% faithful, no work wife, no Facebook inbox wife, no Instagram DM wife, if you are 100% faithful to your woman, you treat her like a queen and you are selfless. Don't worry about what she's reciprocating. You lead in love. If you lead in love and you wash her with love and you are not expecting reciprocation, after one year of that lifestyle, your life will never be the same. I, that I agree with 300 million, 90,000, 300%. So much so that I'm afraid to even think about backsliding. You know what I'm saying? Because Hashtag I've, uh, faithful challenge. Because it's, it's not, yeah, I mean, the faithful black male community is the fastest growing community in the world today. And it's a private neighborhood. We got a nice gated community. High ass gates. So we don't want you riffraff that's only been faithful for 30 days trying to buy <laughs> houses here. somewhere. We're not letting y'all in, okay? <laughs> yeah, wait till a year, then you can come in. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, no, nah, about two. Two years. You have to give me two years of complete faithfulness. I'm talking about not no kissing no other woman, mm -hmm. no nothing, no entertaining, right. none of that. 
You know what I'm saying? Yes, Hashtag faithful challenge. Hashtag right. faithful yes. challenge. Well, thank you Get for joining us, My brother. skin looks so clear. <laughs> no, we don't eat. I promise you, it's Dr. Natasha Sandy, but it's also because of the, my lifestyle I'm living. That's part of a, all, all that clean eating that mm-hmm. everybody be trying to do and having good mental health. That's part of it. That's, that's part of it. Well, thank more you, important. Tony, for joining us. We appreciate you. Thank you all. Thank you all for having me. Tell them where to give me your Twitter and Instagram. And, and don't all you that. also have something coming up? At Tony Gaskins. Um, my book, Make It Work, please just give it a shot. I, 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 if you don't grow or learn from it, I give you your money back. But please get the book, Make It Work. You have seminars as well, right? Um, I have a seminar on uh, the 27th. I'm touring, so wherever you hear this, mm-hmm. just visit my Instagram. You'll see TonyGaskins.com forward slash events. Love to see you in person. Thank you all so much. All, all right. right. Well, we'll see. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. It's Tony Gaskins. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.